Good evening. It is May 11th, and I'm doing my very first drive here with FSD Beta 11.4.1. So, have not done any drives with this build. I just installed it at a friend's house here in St. Paul, making my way back to northeast Minneapolis where I live, and uh, yeah, we'll just kind of have to see how it goes here. Uh, I'm going to have it take more of a city street route. Um, as we go in in northeast Minneapolis, there are some nasty potholes along the way, so more than likely I will have to, uh, you know, adjust that, um, you know, adjust my trajectory at some point and take over to save my wheels, but we'll try our best to let the car do its thing here. So right off the bat, we are in a residential area. It looks like the speed contextually is still not there. I know that was something that was talked about being added, but the car still looks like it wants to do 30 miles per hour when it should be doing something like 20. Um, so that's something that's still I've noticed there. We'll see how it does when it gets into my neighborhood by my house. Um, let's see if it adjusts the speed accordingly there, but so far it looks like it's still, it still prefers to kind of go a little too fast on city streets uh, in residential areas, so. smooth uh, deceleration there before we made the left turn. A little bit wide around that uh, turn there. Um, obviously we had plenty of room to do so, um, but we would have liked to see it finish that turn a little tighter than it did, so. But I'm just nitpicking now, so you can ignore that. <laughs> Right, and we're going to get a right turn now onto Creighton Avenue South. Good job navigating that turn nice and smooth. have to say, very confident with those last two turns there. Um, I've not seen any choppiness on the throttle, so I will say that this is already better than 11.36 was in just terms of confidence around turns. Obviously, this is very first drive. We're going to keep an eye on behavior. Um, you know, over our next few drives to kind of see if we detect any patterns. Obviously, I want to do some more driving tomorrow when uh, it's daylight, but uh, in the meantime, uh, we'll just have to kind of take it as it comes here. So driving at night, uh, there's a little bit less traffic out, so in, in theory, easier conditions from some, some aspects. Um, others a little bit more difficult, obviously, with darkness. Obviously, though, that it's we're driving in well at city streets here, so shouldn't be too hard for FSD Beta on this route here so there was a ramp up ahead too as we got back on I-94 west that was previously closed as of a few days ago not sure if that's still the case um, but that's something that we might have to take over for to, to reroute um, some of the detours unfortunately route you through a nasty part of uh, St. Paul where the roads are really, really bad. Like we're talking like two, three feet wide potholes. So I want to do my best to avoid that area if that is truly the case, but I'll mention that as we get closer here and I'll just kind of stop talking here in the meantime.
noticed the car slow up maybe a mile per hour there as I detected that pedestrian, but it was very slight. You could barely feel it let up there. Um, I would say again, that's noticeably better than uh, what we saw with 1136, where it would make a much more abrupt, um, you know, deceleration input. Usually it would just do a lot of regen, but it would be a lot at once, so letting up on maybe a mile per hour as it was a little uncertain, which is nice because it tells me, the driver, that, hey, it picked that person up. Um, it's it's preparing to yield for them if they decide to dart out in front of us, but still continuing our path with a good speed. So if somebody was falling behind us, it wouldn't, like, startle them or make them have to change their speed at all. So good behavior there. All right, and it looks like the uh, on-ramp to I-94 West is not shut down the way it was previously, so that's great news. So we should be able to get on this here. Looks like it was going to proceed through that light there as if it was green. Now, I would have probably preferred it to get in the other lane. Uh, it was a turn lane, but did not really like that behavior. I'm going to report that. Um, I didn't have to disengage because of how it worked out with traffic there, but that could have put us in an interesting position. We would typically prefer the car to stay to the left lane there. Um, and then, you know, the behavior of that green light, that green light was only if you were proceeding straight, not if you were turning. You needed an arrow to turn there. So, um, but again, kind of the circumstance there, we didn't have to disengage, but I could have seen that going the other way if uh, that light wouldn't have changed when it did, so... So it looks like from a merge behavior getting onto the highway, um, it's very similar to 11.3 where the car is not signaling and it's not getting over before the merge line. It's just essentially following the merge line. So the merge behavior continues to be, you know, something that I would say needs to be addressed down the road, you know. Depending on traffic levels like we have now, it's not a problem doing what I just did there, but it's a bit busier traffic we're going to have to potentially merge a little sooner depending on where the window opens up and be signaling too so just something that's currently a limitation i know that wasn't mentioned in the release notes so didn't really expect it to change but just wanted to call it out
that truck kind of cut the turn lane there a little bit and I was worried the car was going to try to merge when it was adjacent to that truck but it did a good job of still slowing and anticipating that turn so that was really good there. Again, really smooth behavior with the throttle inputs here. And I really like the fact the car is getting right over to the right lane there and not staying to the left because we do have a right turn coming up at the intersection ahead, which is great. All right, so let's see if the car proceeds here. The light's gone. I'm just gonna nudge it forward there. So it looks like the, the light kind of spooked it there. I'm just pressing the throttle. You can see the car, it, the lights are lit up there. I know we had a train that was parked to our right there that wasn't moving, but um, I've noticed that behavior before with 11.3. So that's really our first intervention of this, of this drive so far. Um, that's behavior I saw previously too with 11.3 where if the train signal was active even when the arms go up the car will not proceed until I tell it to do so so I'm not sure if that's by design but just something I've noticed so you know in the future I would like to see the car kind of automatically proceed when those arms go up and the lights go off but um, I'm sure for now it's a safety thing so totally understand All right, and as soon as we make this right turn here, I'm going to actually kill the nav because there are some really nasty potholes. Um, so I'm going to actually initiate right here a left turn or a left lane merge here. As you can see to the right there, the city supposedly fixed some of them, but there was like a two foot wide pothole back there. And then I just killed the navigation. I wanted to go to my house now. I use this as a waypoint here. So. And then now I'm just going to basically let it go straight now for the next mile and a half or so till we get a little closer and I'll have it go to my house. So, And I could probably fake it out too right now. Let me just do that. There's a church not too far from my house that... Uh, let's see here. Or not. <laughs> we'll just let it go. So for those that don't know, obviously, if you just turn off navigation of the FSD beta, it will just do like what autopilot used to do, where it will just continue to go straight on the path that you're heading. So in this case, this lane would go away, and it does merge up here at some point, but, you know, nobody's around us, so it does a great job, as you can see there, of getting to the left and merging into the lane there. So good job. But yeah, so the car will just continue to go straight on the path that we've we basically told it to do. Um, you know, this route, for the most part, we're going to go through at least probably four or five stops, four-way stops up here. Um, some of them cause FSD beta to hesitate a bit too much in the past just due to visibility and the way they're laid out. So, you know, it's nighttime, so obviously take the results with a grain of salt because most of my testing is and videos have been done during the day. But it'll be interesting to kind of compare. Funny when people think I have my brights on. I mean, that person definitely activated their brights, and as you can see, my <laughs> my high beams are off. It's just the Tesla has good properly. And those are the high beams right there. So <laughs> it always makes me laugh. People think I have my high beams on. I guess I could have flashed them to see to show them what the difference is, but we'll save the retina some abuse tonight.
And while I'm in the assertive profile right now, I will say that the acceleration from a dead stop is pretty pronounced. I don't know if I, if it's just because of the profile. I'll have to play around with the different profiles tomorrow more, but uh, I definitely feel like the car is accelerating with a bit more authority than I noticed it doing before. So for me, it's not uncomfortable, but obviously it's, you know, relative to the driver here, so. Alright, we got a partially occluded stop sign here. The car is doing a great job of picking it up as you can see on the screen there. Got a car on our right here that looks like he's going to be clear. And just a very brief pause and we are on our way. So good job with that four way stop. This is the road that's just really bad as you can see here. It's They had to repave large sections of it because there were so many potholes. but. You know, unfortunately, like Minneapolis loves to do, they don't fix all the potholes. So there's more up ahead here, so we'll just have to kind of keep our eye out here and I may have to take over at some point here. And then once we cross this intersection here, I am going to restart the navigation back from my house here. And it should take us the rest of the way. So we stopped a little late there, but still well before the crosswalk there. So, noticed that before, but it definitely was going to slow down for it, so I didn't feel like I needed to intervene. So, switch the nav now. I've had to avoid this road for much of uh, the spring so far because of the fact that it's the potholes have been so bad. So hopefully in a week or two here, we'll be able to do more tests on this route. A little bit of hesitation there. Um, that's a, that's one of the intersections where it's continually done, where it's excessively hesitated. I will say though, it seemed to not want to excessively creep through the intersection. It seemed to kind of hesitate kind of at the stop line. But then after like that second hesitation, it decided to go. So. If it did any more times there, it wouldn't be an issue, but that wasn't, that wasn't too bad. Nice job with that right turn there. Great work. So turns so far have been really good so far. Haven't really had any issues that I can see. I know I nitpicked one of the line selections of one of the turns, but honestly, that it's been really good so far. I'm very confident. because I wanted to take a specific turn, I will temporarily end the navigation. I wanted to turn left on a 36th Avenue here. Um, and just kind of calling out, before the version 11.3 builds, the car would make a swooping turn to the right, or it would make a left turn uh, by first moving to the right and using some of that dead space for parking. And that was any time we would turn left off this road, which is Johnson Street Northeast, it would do that. As of version 11.3, the car stayed more aligned to the center line before initiating and completing its turn, which is exactly what a human would do, because there's so much space on this road. We don't need to make a swooping line to, like, you know, go around traffic to our left and whatever, so... So let's see if it kind of does that same behavior that we saw with 11.3. We've got some cars coming above or in front of us here. So we're going to have to slow down. Very confident there. Very smooth. That was awesome. And you can see in terms of placement here, we're not moving to the right. So we actually had given a room to our, our right for people to pass around us, which is great. 
and wow, finally. Uh, <laughs> I'm so happy right now. Like, <laughs> I'm, you're gonna laugh at me, but for once, it, it finally detects the speed limit in my neighborhood as 20 miles per hour. This is fantastic. This has been something that I have probably complained about for every FSD beta build since 10.1 and 10.2. Um, and finally, like, it's fixed. I'm so happy. That was an intervention every time I had to engage FSD in my neighborhood. So, great work there. Um, still hesitate a little bit too much there. We have a driveway to our right and then a, a lane to our left that does not stop. But, yeah, the speed change there, that's fantastic. So, the contextual awareness of being in a residential neighborhood seems to be there. I'd love to know how Tesla figured that out, but that was really good. So, yeah. Um, Zero disengagements for the first drive here with 1141. So, you know, honestly, so far so good. Um, be doing many more drives tomorrow once I get some sleep here, but uh, I'll be uploading this here in the next few minutes and then uh, be up probably putting timestamps on this video sometime tomorrow morning then as well. So anyways, hope you found it interesting. I will see you in the next one. Thanks again for watching.